aero dynamic you need to get it just to keep the accuracy but that's basically it that's the setup I've been catching on since yesterday and that's ready to go so I could just drop that in the margins or fish it about 78 yards no problem just remember with PVA bagging is that to make sure you get your rig completely dry before you get it get it anywhere near your PVA I mean one drop of water is going to make the bag break so dry it off in a towel drop it in some base mix just do, do whatever you think really to get it dry yeah, rather than mix up a huge bucket of PVA bag mix and then possibly waste half of it at the end of a session I like to do mix up a little bit little and often just to keep it as fresh as possible I'll often leave the crumbing of the boilers to the very last minute before I'm going to make the bag up I mean these uh, the multiplex freezer baits sort of crumb down really nicely um, and I find they're superb in, in bag mixes but the key is to put them in at the last minute so they don't start drying up just tied up a couple of new rigs and I've just set up a couple of si typical PVA bag situations um, the first one we've got one size of pellet um, and a bright boilie I mean this is what people traditionally associate with a PVA bag setup you know, nice and simple and, and over the years it's caught a lot of fish but on waters where you've seen a bit of pressure this is going to stop working eventually I mean it's quite easy for the carp to think ah there's a hook bait let's just eat everything around it and leave that on its own it does happen. I've seen it countless times in the margins where the hook bait is gets sussed straight away and believe me when I say carp are capable of clearing every bit of that pellet and, and not even touching that hook bait. They, they are in a lot of waters. If you compare that with this one, this is what I'm fishing on Unity today. It's dead simple to do. It's just taking the PVA bag set up one step further. Same rig, um, the hook bait, just instead of a round boilie, just a couple of little cylinder shaped boilies. And in the mix, I've just got crushed boilies, um, two sizes of pellet. I mean, but if you if you compare the two, it's not hard to see which the carp is going to suss out quicker. I mean, on that one, it's I mean, the hook bait could be anywhere on that one. It could be that boily, it could be a bit of pellet, it could be that. So you've got you're giving the carp a lot more to think about on that one, and they're going to get they're going to get caught on that more than than on that setup, especially on waters of seen a little bit of pressure. Not everywhere, you know, this setup will still catch, but I find, especially, you know, at this time of year, when we're heading into the autumn, um, nine times out of ten, this setup will score better than that one. Yeah, both setups are going to catch, but it's worth ringing the changes, you know, it can be on a daily basis which one's going to work better. One of the things I think is really important when fishing bags is to keep your hook link nice and short. I mean, my starting point is around about five inches, and I'll show you exactly why. If you think about how that sits on the bottom, a carp comes in to feed it's not exactly good it's not exactly got to go very far to eat all that pellet it's not going to move far it's going to keep grubbing around on this little area and the hook link too long is going to give it too much room for maneuver when the carp sucks in your hook bait so what, what, I, what I'm looking to achieve is when the when the carp sucks in the bait the hook link is going to straighten in its mouth and what normally happens is it will sort of jolt back and that's a point when a carp know that it will know that there's something wrong um, but say you had a hook link twice that long and it sucks it in the carp is going to think ah there's something in there but you're not getting the advantage of the hook link pulling straight and then just slightly jolting back and it can get rid of it a lot easier I mean as I said five inches is my starting point but on a few waters that are really pressured I've gone down to as little as three inches and I know it seems short but believe me it is long enough to still catch fish and hook them properly um, it takes a bit of sort of a leap of faith to fish them that short, but on certain waters it really does work. Um, and, if, and if you're fishing like this and you think, oh, I should have caught a fish, but perhaps it hasn't gone, and you had a few liners and you've got fish rolling over your bait, one of the first things I would do is to shorten the link down and see if the carp are getting away with it. And you often find that, say, just taking two inches off will do the trick. Yeah, with a setup like this, I found that going shorter first is definitely better than going longer. We got down to Unity yesterday afternoon, uh, had a quick look around, spoke to a few of the locals. They put us onto a few hot spots out in the middle, but funnily enough, it was been the margins that have produced all the fish. I mean, I took advice of the locals and put two rods out in the middle last night, and I decided to put the third one down the margins, where I knew a couple of fish had been caught before. And I must admit, I thought that uh, as it got dark, 
there was a few fish showing out in open water. Um, the spot I was fishing out there was just, just behind a big bed of Canadian pondweed where it shallows up onto, onto a slight plateau. That was a spot I thought it was going to produce. And the third rod went down the edge really, um, again onto a little silty spot, just a bag and a few spots of hemp over it. And say it was only out there an hour before I had a tench. And then it's just been steady really, um, carp every few hours. So it wasn't the rod I expected to go, but it shows you can never tell where the carp are going to be. And even local knowledge sort of isn't enough at times. A wet night, uh, it's rained all night, but the fish are feeding. Just picked up my fourth fish now, picking them up from just down the margins. Action started it just after dark last night. We caught a tench first, and a calf, and another one, and it went quiet. Just picked up this one in the rain again. I've had this one on a good five minutes now. Um, from the fight, I've got a feeling it's one of the ghosted. Maybe wrong. But they do fight hard. So I had two so far, and they took a long time to get in. Just picking all the fish up on cylinder shaped bottom baits, just a multiplex. Seems to be the winning bait at the moment. Oh, it's not a ghosty. Unity Lake Car, mm. not a massive one, but uh, I know Linnea put a, a load of fish in last year of this sort of size to grow on. And they've already put a lot of weight on. I think they're going to be some big fish in another couple of years' time. Probably give it a two years, I think that's going to be 20 plus to be honest. It's about 12, 13 pounds now. A nice little car. There we go, another another ghost, well, sort of a ghosty. Cracking fish. But a lot of people come down to Guy's Hall, these fish on, in this lake, they're quite famous for it. Some of the other ones are sort of now approaching 30 pounds. This is, to be honest, this is one of the smaller ones. But a cracker, just under 20. Well, they certainly were superb ghost carp that Ian caught, and the lake is actually quite renowned for them. The whole complex, in fact, or the, the Guy's Lake Syndicate as a whole, like, is very, very good water, and it's well known for producing fish to 40 pounds. Here's another little method that you might want to look at concerning pellet, and that's the use of a product called Sticko. Once rolled and formed, the pellet goes off hard, and these can, can be catapulted a real distance and this is another little edge that you might want to employ in your own carp fishing. James Harrison who works alongside myself on advanced carp fishing has been messing around with Sticko so let's cross to James and have a look and see what he does. As you can see from the bits and pieces that James got here he's using the Sticko powder along with some very small halibut pellet and a handful of gravel. The gravel incidentally is to add weight to the finished ball to enable it to travel further nice little tactical tip and something he's been keeping quiet for quite a while now. It's purely a case of taking the pellet, putting the required amount into a bowl and giving them a good dicing with a sticko powder. One important factor here is that you must work this product with wet hands. You'll notice that James has an atomizer which he's filled with lake water. Once the pellets have been covered completely in the white powder, James then adds a little bit more water and also adds some water to his hands to enable him to work the product without it sticking to his skin. As this powder soaks into the pellet or binds the pellet, James is able to form small balls or large balls of pellet which if left for a short period will go absolutely rock hard and can be catapulted a fair old distance. 
Well, as you can see, James's method is something that you might want to consider, and it's a very tactical approach when you need to get bait out at range.